Hey, what is up, guys? It's Brennan here. I'm going to be doing a live Q&A for Shopify dropshipping. So we're just going to wait a few minutes for everyone to go ahead and get in here. Uh, so just go ahead and wait a second as the stream uh, starts up. So if you're new here, uh, just uh, just know that I do Shopify dropshipping videos. I do a variety of different investing type stuff as well. Uh, that's pretty much what I upload on the channel. But today I'm answering questions and a little Q&A for you guys. So <laughs> what's up, Peter? Uh, not new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do Shopify dropshipping. That's the main thing I do on the channel for sure, uh, and e-commerce related. But I also do investing type videos, stock market stuff. Uh, as well as just general entrepreneurship type things as well on the channel. Really that whole kind of like niche, it's mostly what I focus on. So if you guys have any questions, uh, what's up Peter, go ahead and leave those in the in the comments section on the video. Uh, just waiting for everyone to get in here. Da, da, da. Welcome, what's up guys? If you can hear me fine, just go ahead and put like a one. Uh, what's up, what's up Zinai uh, Haruna Gadu, hello? As in I, I, I probably am saying everything completely wrong. Hey, what's up, bro? Just chilling. It's uh, about 7 p.m. where I'm at in Florida. So I don't know what time it is for you guys, but it's about 7 p.m. for me on the East Coast. So just chilling. Going to be doing live Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to leave those. Um, really, mostly around really anything, I guess. <laughs> anything I could answer. Shopify dropshipping is what I focus on, but I mean, e-commerce in general, investing, all that kind of stuff, but waiting for everyone to get in, start rolling out the questions. Um, all right, what's up, what's up, what's up guys, how's it going? I want to start with some Instagram influencer ads, any advice tips uh so for instagram influencer ads uh peter uh what i would recommend is making sure and verifying that the instagram influencers are actually legitimate so the way that you can do that is to make sure their engagement is really solid in their comment section on their posts make sure they have a good amount of likes ratio to their followers so if they have like a i think i have a video on this on the channel i think i think i did a couple different ones they're a little bit older um, if you go back into like the Shopify playlists or just on the channel in general into my Instagram influencer videos, I used to talk about them a lot more on the channel, um, but I've done a lot of those videos before. So pretty much look at the like ratios, look at the comment ratios in terms of starting to talk to them. A lot of them probably won't be able to get back to you just because they're really busy. So if, if they're going to want to actually do business with you, they will respond. You can try emailing them as well. Uh, email can help. Uh, just contacting, contacting them in the DM, like making sure that you put like business with little like emojis so that they actually, you know, you catch their attention so that they will actually respond to you. That can help probably. Uh, what's up, stylist music? Hey, buddy, do you fulfill medium or high risk orders? So this is something that I actually, um, when I was first starting out, I, I kind of tended to avoid them. I would usually just refund people. But as I got more experience with it, like in the beginning, you might want to just refund them and just like be like, oh, nope, I'm not going to deal with this person. But as I got like more advanced with it, a lot of times you get the medium and high risk order when it's like someone is between two different countries a lot. So I had a couple where people were in Canada and the US and it would trigger a medium high, a medium risk just because they live near the border. So they go in and out of like Canada and US or they travel a lot, okay? So that's typically what those um, medium to high risk orders get flagged for is people that travel. So you just have to look at it analytically and be like, okay, is it someone who's probably just traveling or are they, or if they order like, <laughs> I had one time where this dude tried to order like four of this one, like uh, it was like an acne um, device. I, I don't know. I never had sold one on my store before. I was selling them for like 60 bucks. It was just, I threw it in there just to fill in the store with more items. This one dude bought it. It was like 60 bucks a piece. He bought like two or three of them. And I was like, this just doesn't seem accurate. I'm not about to put like a bunch of money on the line for this dude who might end up giving me a chargeback. So I just refunded him and was like, sorry, there's some sort of error or something. So like I, if the, if it looks fishy, I would just 
just cancel it. But if it doesn't look too fishy, then go through with it. Because it's still money. They wanted the order. So, you know, if it if it looks fishy, then I wouldn't go through with it. And you can kind of just analyze it, like what I was just explaining. Um, so, uh, what's up? What's up, guys? Leave your questions and comments in here. Just doing the live Q&A. Uh, welcome to the stream. Do you think Facebook, Peter asks, do you think Facebook messenger marketing is the new email marketing? I do. I know that Alex Becker talks about it a lot and Ty Lopez does it a lot as well. Uh, I would definitely say that it is good because you're getting access to push notifications on people. So instead of on their phone, when it's just email, not everyone has like email push notifications. I do because I get a lot of emails. Um, so I, I've done that. Um, in terms of app recommendations for that, um, there's one, I went to Ty Lopez's website, uh, just to check it out and see what his funnel looked like. And when it popped up there, there was an app that he was using on the website, which you might be able to use on a Shopify store as well. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but if you just go to his website, it'll pop up with like the messenger thing. And then in the bottom right corner, there'll be a little, um, icon for the brand or for the the software that he's using so then you can click on that little icon logo the and then it should take you right to their website and you can see there's a free version so that's at least good as well Peter um, so you could try and s play around with it um, that would probably be the best thing uh, what's up Ryan it's Rian uh, what's up Joseph uh, so it's about 40 orders through influ wait I have about 40 orders through influencers, but do you think that influencers, followers who buy your product are, if a bit, wait, are if a bit broad audience for lookalike audiences? I mean, if it's, if you're trying to do like the same niche every time, then it won't be broad. If you're selling like different products, um, then it might be too broad. If you're selling like a bunch of different pro types of products, but if you're selling the same like product just on different influencer pages, then um, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's Rian. Uh, if you have 40 orders, I mean, you want to get around like 50 to 100, maybe even over 100, 150. The more data you have for Facebook, the better your lookalike audience will be. And if it's for the same product, then it won't be an issue. You should be fine. Um, but if it's for different products, it might not work very well. Uh, free methods of product research. There's lots of paid options, not much for free that I know, Joseph. Um, so answering that one there, I would say Pexta.com. I talk about this a lot in streams. A lot of people ask that question about product research. Pexta.com. Another free method that is really, really good that I've done is just scroll through Instagram. Kind of look at like the top pages within your niche. All you have to do is search for your niche see the top pages, see what they're selling, look at their stores. You can also do the, uh, in the URL, you can type in like slash collections. Um, I don't know what it exactly is. Just look up on Google, like how to sort by best selling on websites, Shopify. And it will, it will explain, it will like order the products based on best selling on the website, on the Shopify store. So you can utilize that, um, information on some of those top stores that you see through Instagram or through Facebook, just search through your niche and you should be able to find some top stores. Yeah. Pexta. Yeah, no, I would say Pexta is a little oversaturated. I would say just try and find stores within your niche by searching the niche on Instagram, Facebook, and then sort their products by best selling. And is if they have a decent social following, you should be able to find some good stuff there. Um, see what they're pushing on their social media. Like what's the, the newest product that they're kind of like advertising on their pages that should definitely help a little bit too. Cool, cool, cool. All right, stream's kind of, it's like lagging for me a little bit. Um, should be fine for you guys though. Uh, going more to the other questions here. Uh, okay, so the lab, what's up, what's up? Hey, when an item on AliExpress says that there's a limit per customer, does that mean I won't be able to sell more than the limit of my store's film, film processors, all that, like a 10 customer limit? I have not actually run into that. I remember adding one product to my store a while ago that was like, it was like 50 maximum or something. Uh, I'm not exactly too sure if that's a problem. Might want to just find a different supplier. That that might be better answer there for you, Lab. Uh, Linda Parker, hello, just listening. I'm about to start a store too. 
What's up, Linda? Uh, but I'm not sure what products yet. I want to start with one niche and one product at a time. What do you think about that plan? Uh, so starting a new store, it, okay, it depends like what type of store you want to do. If you want to go for a more like branded niche store, that's probably a better long-term route than just going like a trendy general store. Although general stores are good for testing out products in the beginning phases. Um, but if you want to build like a long-term business, I would say pick one niche and just like really focus on that. Uh, and then one product at a time. I would say if you're going to test, yeah, you test like one product at a time. Um, just with your ads, if you're going to be running Facebook ads, um, I, you know, I know I, I understand you're, you're probably new to this in starting out and stuff like that. Uh, I have a lot of different videos on my channel that might be able to help you out, Linda, but I would say, I mean, do product research, do what I said for Joseph on there. Um, all that kind of stuff that would probably be the best there, Linda, for you. Uh, and going back to Joseph, yeah, I'm afraid Pexa might be oversaturated. Like, yeah, like I already said, the lab, thanks, you're welcome. Uh, Melanie McDonald, I have a store that has a small amount of traffic, but not many sales. Uh, okay, so if you have a store with small, it depends on where your traffic's coming from. I mean, you might have a small amount of traffic from one source and it converts really, really well for you. It, it depends on your traffic, you know, not many sales. I mean, or not, yeah, I mean, if you have a, it depends on where your, what your traffic source is. I mean, some traffic sources are already kind of warmed up to you, so then they may be more willing to purchase, whereas some traffic sources aren't as warmed up to you, so they're probably, like, you, you really have to hit them with the right product. Um, so that, that kind of, like, is the, the shift there, Melanie. It, you know, at least based on what you said. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that could, that could cause that. Uh, Joseph, how come you're not showing off your cash? Are you more of an info of an info guy? Yeah, I definitely more of an info guy. I'm not out here trying to trying to flex on everybody. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm trying to focus on actually giving value because the thing is, is like what I see from a lot of different YouTubers and just influencers in general is they flash a lot, but they don't really know how to like explain things very well to people or actually help them in any regard. So that's what I'm focusing on is actually helping people. Versus just saying a bunch of stuff and being like, oh, yeah, you just do that. Yeah, it's like, you know, you just point it. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Make a ton of money. Like, it's not, like there's a lot more shit than, than just, oh, y y yeah, you got this. Oh, you got this. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's success. Boom. It's, you know, it's not that simple. So I'm just trying to bring something different to the table. Uh, uh, God of Toast, do you think the artificial plant planter and wedding decor plants is a good niche. I mean, really you can make money in any niche. That's what's kind of crazy about this. I mean, if you know what you're talking about or can help people, you, you don't even have to be like that amazing. I mean, uh, but within the artificial plant planter and wedding decor, I mean, I'm not exactly sure how, what products you would be f like supplying yourself with. From AliExpress, I haven't really looked into that niche too much on AliExpress, like what their products, what they offer within that niche. So if you could find AliExpress products that you could resell for off of there, then sure, God of Toast, yeah, that could work. Um, but you just have to be able to find the right products to source. Um, uh, Fuse Mods, what's up? Uh, hi, do you recommend multiple categories like phone cases, bracelets, or just one category? Uh, depends on the niche. I don't know if you're trying to do a general store or if you're trying to do like, so say for example, you had German shepherds, right? You're going to want to do German shepherd phone cases, bracelets, and like any other German shepherd related products. You don't want to just do just German shepherd phone cases. Like I probably want to do like bracelets and some other stuff. Depends on what you're trying to do. There's a, there are a lot of different ways you could, you could kind of like angle that, but I would say if you're trying to do like a niche store, probably have multiple different types of products and categories that people could shop through. Uh, that would just give people more of a catalog to look at. Uh, Linda Parker, yep, sounds good. Thanks for the head up. You're welcome. Uh, the Yas, what's up, dude? Recommend you, or I recognize you from the channel. The Yas has been with us for a long time in the squad. Uh, what about high ticket? So high ticket is harder to sell for sure. I probably wouldn't wouldn't really recommend it for most people, um, 
just because like it, it's it's just a harder sell i mean high ticket is better if you can offer more to people so like if you were to do a high ticket product you probably want to have some sort of sales pitch some sort of content something where you're having more interaction with the with the buyer okay if you're just throwing a facebook ad at them they're probably not going to buy a high ticket offer like you need to have like, even a webinar or something like something else to actually sell them on the product some sort of content that they they get to know you with i mean they're they're not going to just buy it right off the bat like with info products i mean any any kind of product that you're trying to sell that's high ticket it's not going to work just blasting them uh joseph it's annoying everything is vague and self-centered yeah exactly exactly you're completely right about that one joseph uh, it's ran it's not easy at all yep if you're starting off guys don't expect you'll make 1k in your first week exactly yeah i mean like it's it's rare to do that you kind of can with influencers if you do it the right way but like it's still kind of just like i mean you, people get lucky sometimes to be honest with certain with certain uh trending products that they get this one pocket you know that can that can like blast them off a lot or a certain influencer right product right people it can be done but yeah no right away in your first week no way like you got there's a lot more stuff you have to learn before you can get to that point um, or even have the potential to get to that like level. Like, it's just, it's, it's a grind for sure. Uh, how do you, how to compete with the prices from Amazon and eBay? So raging dragon, you actually are not competing at all with Amazon and eBay prices. You don't have to worry about Amazon and eBay prices whatsoever because, and I've seen this question come up before. Um, the thing is, is your store is focused around a specific type of person, right? So like, they want to buy from you more because they trust you. They trust your branding. They trust the, the story that you're telling in the ad copy or, or your, your sales page or whatever, uh, raging dragon. So like you won't really be competing with them because their your sales page is better than Amazon and eBay. Amazon and eBay sales pages are kind of just bland. So it's like, you're, you're getting them into more of a sales pitch and, and it's almost like, it's almost like Amazon and eBay are like, uh, okay. So think, think about this with like furniture stores, right? So Amazon and eBay might be like the Craigslist of furniture stores, right? It's like, oh, it's just a, just a chair. It's just a table. Then you go to Ikea, you're taking through the entire sales pitch of, wow, look at how this looks in this bedroom that they created. Wow. I want this desk. I want this and that. Like think, like compare the two there. I mean, the Ikea is going to win every time in comparison to just a table and chairs sitting on the ground, unless it's some special table and chairs, but like, I mean, Ikea does a way better job at selling. So that's what you're doing. You're, you're get, doing a better job at selling and kind of creating like this little, you're hitting a certain pocket of people. They're like, Ooh, this looks awesome. I like this product versus just people randomly trying to price match. It's, it's not exactly, you're not going to really be competing. Um, uh, you just have to make it within reason, I guess. It's all it all just comes down to branding, right? Raging Dragon, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. But yeah. Uh, da, 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 next one, Joseph. Sorry for so many questions. Hey, just keep it coming. It's no big deal. That's the whole point of this uh, stream. Uh, my niche is that a hippie niche, having troubles finding products with demand. How do I find compelling items? So I really don't know too much about the hippie niche uh, at all. Like th probably the wrong person to ask about the hippie niche to really give you any help there. Um, with that Joseph, but I mean, find compelling items, try and find other stores that are already doing well in your niche. Try like the store that you're probably modeling your store after look at what they're selling or look at, you know, if there is one, which there should be one, if you're modeling your stuff, you should be creating based off of what somebody else is creating, kind of like reincarnating it into yourself. So try and see what other people are selling. That's the best advice I could say for finding compelling items As, in that niche. I have no experience with that niche at all. So I really don't know how to help you there with that one, but, um, stylus music, do you have a course? Or are you planning to have a course in the future? So stylus music, I actually do have a course. It is linked in the description here. You can go ahead and check it out. Uh, I have a full, like takes you step by step exactly how to start your store, how to do in Instagram influencer um, app marketing, how to do Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff like how to deal with customers. A everything is in there. Um, it's linked in the description box if you want to go ahead and check it out. Uh, Stylus music. 
that is the course. So uh, Linda Parker, Joseph Peace Signs, uh, Flower Power and Tie Dye is hippie smoking paraphernalia. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I guess what exactly what Linda said, like that kind of those kind of products could definitely help. Something like that. Uh, Miguel Valdez, what social media are you using to advertise? Uh, Facebook ads, um, Instagram. I mean, Facebook and Instagram are the two. Those are the two powerhouses really for social media. YouTube can also be a, a very effective if you have a more content-based business with like, I'm helping someone actually right now kind of build out their content side of things on YouTube. And then they're going to sell uh, like drop, not really drop ship products, but AliExpress products uh, ordered in bulk here with Alibaba and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of like something that's in the works right now that I'm helping them with. So uh, YouTube can be very powerful as well. Just growing any kind of following within that, within a niche. Uh, so that, that's the kind of social media I would say is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, but Facebook and Instagram are really the two that most people would focus on because they're a little bit easier. Like YouTube's a bigger kind of thing to tackle and requires someone who actually wants to create content around this business versus Versus just selling products directly. It's a different type of thing. It depends on what you're trying to do. But those are the ones I recommend. Hey, I recently did a Facebook ad engagement post. Got well over a thousand likes on the post and split tested with conversion ad, but still no sales. What do you suggest I do next? So Facebook engagement ad, I actually just ran one yesterday for this new product that I was testing out. And Facebook engagement ads are going to be the best for... Um, they're, they're, those are going to be the best for any kind of viral type product. And then conversion ad is probably what you really want to be doing. Um, but still no sales with conversion ad. It's going to take like, from what I hear is like three to four days, really from what I've seen is probably the best, uh, timing that it's going to be for a conversion ad. And you're testing, you're, you're trying out data. If you get, a, if you get like a sale, if you didn't get no sales, it might be your product. Just move on. Uh, Ian Morocco. Uh, moving along, Raging Dragon, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Sand Deep. Uh, how to give that feel in your storage makes this, your store more authentic. And the reason why customer uh, buy from the, they would buy from the store. Uh, so to give your store more authenticity, I would say make your font, your colors, the branding, the logoing, all those kind of things can make your store look better. Um less of the overly spammy countdown timers that I see on so many stores, like avoid that. <laughs> uh, moving along here. Okay. So raging dragon. Yep. You're welcome. Uh, how to deal with promotions, labels, and brands on a product fuse mods answering your question there. Um, so to deal with promote promotions, labels, I mean, people really, it's, it's almost like you're, a store that sells, I mean, there's a lot of different like outlet type stores. So don't worry about the branding that may be on an AliExpress product. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, unless you're trying to grow like a very strong brand, then you would want to do like your own custom orders and, and do, but that's like more advanced stuff with Alibaba. The lab, it's like more advanced e-commerce type stuff if you wanted to do like custom branding and logoing on a product but just doing a shopify dropshipping store don't really need that it doesn't matter uh the lab try dropshipping spy i think they have a, a system where you can find products for new niches at joseph you will lose a lot of money if you start advertising on facebook without any sales or will you lose a lot of money if you start advertising um i mean it's kind of you're testing uh in the beginning phases with facebook so you're gonna lose money, but it's getting data and building your pixel so you can then scale it in the future. It's kind of, but if you, if you don't have success with one product, you got to jump to another product. Maybe it's your targeting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what would you recommend to approach products, run three to five ads for one product to narrow it down what works and what doesn't? You could do that for sure, Miguel. And there's a lot of different ways you can run Facebook ads. That can, I mean, that can work. Uh, I've gotten a good amount of add to carts, but I messed something, uh, the lab, I've got a good amount of add to carts, but I messed something up on my uh, shipping rates. So no sales. I have some data and I want to start Facebook. Should I try to get more sales without Facebook? Shipping rates. Uh, I have some data. I want to start. It, you have to have like, 
a good amount of data uh, on Instagram and stuff like that or wherever you're getting your traffic to, to do a lookalike audience. If you're talking about doing that on Facebook, uh, you could try to get more sales with – you could do like conversion ads um, or you could try and get more sales without Facebook. I mean – you, the thing is, you need the pixel fires for the and for the lookalike audience to work out right. <sighs> Moving along here, uh, Miguel Valdez like different interests for each one. Oh, to answer, yeah, uh, yeah, I would say one different interest per ad set if you're testing that that way. Uh, what type of targeting do you do on Facebook ads? Do you do broad targeting, flex targeting? Um. So in terms of targeting on Facebook, I don't really know the specific names of every how everyone's calling it, like broad and flex. I mean, what I do is just match it up with a must include this or if like I don't really stack interests, if that's what you're asking, just because it's hard to tell what what's working out of that. I would say pick one specific interest and then exclude what the things I exclude is always AliExpress and Shopify. Because if people are interested in that, they're going to know where you're getting the product from. And that's going to not, they're not going to buy from you. They, they're they like one of us. They they know what AliExpress is. They know what Shopify is. So they're not going to buy from you. Uh, so I would exclude those people that are interested in those things. And then you should be fine. Moving along here. Uh, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome, Miguel. Uh, Sandeep, what is that YouTubers hide which they teach in their courses? And is that possible? And is that possible to actually make sales watching videos? You can make sales watching free videos on YouTube for sure. There's a lot of good information out there on my channel, on other people's channels. The thing that, the thing that I've seen that most people, most other YouTubers kind of hide, and really, I mean, it's not like I'm really hiding anything in my course either directly. It's, I mean, it's just the courses offer you a step-by-step -step guide so that you have all the information in one nice condensed thing and you don't really know what you don't know. So that's the thing with YouTube is like you might watch this video, that video kind of all over the place, right? But if you go through like my course or any anybody else's courses or what, whatever you do, right? You The way that I've laid things out is step by step so that you get all the information that you need to know to do things correctly. If you don't know what you don't know, you might be missing something that you're like, oh, I didn't know I needed to do that. Oh, okay, I need to do that. So there's there's all that kind of stuff, Sandeep, that can kind of that kind of answers your question there. Um, a, I mean, some YouTubers kind of hide specific details, almost like how to run ads in certain ways. I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't exactly. I mean, I don't know exactly what's in everybody else's courses, so but that's kind of like from my analysis and what people have said. It's like some of the specific details are a little bit left out, but out of YouTube videos. But that's because you can't go super in depth in a lot of YouTube videos. It just it just depends. I would say the step by step laid out aspect of courses is the best part of it. Um, Joe JJ, how do you recommend starting with a hundred dollars? Is it even possible? Is it okay to message an influencer on a personal page? Uh, yeah, it's, it's fine to message influencers on a personal page. That's not a problem, Joe. Uh, but starting with a hundred dollars, you're probably going to burn through that pretty quick. I would say make an income from some sort of job or other kind of source of income to cover yourself and then test with a hundred dollars, but you're going to want to test with more money than that. I mean, only a hundred dollars to play around with. You can burn that really quick and not have any success and be right around the corner from something that's going to work. So I would save up some more money. Um, Joe J for sure. Save up, save up some more money. Cause it's just, it's hard. It's hard to, um, it's hard to play around with only a hundred dollars. You want, that should be like almost like pocket change to, to throw into this. I mean, it's going to take money testing and figuring things out. Uh, ambitious entrepreneur. Wow. Gold nugget there. You're thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Joseph, I got 700 ads to cart, 400 checkouts and 40 purchases just from Facebook groups. Cause I was broke, just got put in Facebook jail. Can I, <laughs> can I create a decent lookalike audience from those numbers? Yeah, for sure. 
you can definitely create a decent lookalike audience from those numbers. You have 400, oh, oh, four, 40 purchases. Okay. Sorry. I thought that was 400 purchases when it said checkouts. I was like, wow, 400 purchases. Like that's a, that's plenty, but no. Okay. So 40 purchases, I would say you're going to want to month. You're going to want to, you're going to want more than 40 purchases. You are going to want anywhere from 100, 150 roughly purchases to get a good, like decent lookalike audience for it to work out properly. Um, uh, Ian Morocco, uh, for testing, should I stick to engagement ads? That's how you can kind of gauge interest is with engagement ads. I would say probably do conversion ads to test. Um, it, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, engagement ads work well for virally type products because the video could go viral with an engagement ad, but, um, I, yeah, conversion probably for testing. I heard add to cart works testing. Yeah, that, you're de definitely right about that one, Joseph. Um, but you need the, you need a certain amount of purchases to get the lookalike audience to work properly. Otherwise it's not going to optimize. I mean, uh, with that amount of add to carts though, you could just optimize for add to carts and that should work. I, I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. I mean, you have to look, probably look through Facebook to see what their specific data requirements are. You know, that, that would tell you what you need. Um, they have like webs, they have little web pages telling you what they, what they recommend for you for things to work properly. So you can just search like how many of this lookalike audience on it for Facebook ads, like, and a Facebook, like business.facebook, like a blog article will come up. Uh, Ian Morocco for testing. Sh oh, right. I already answered that question. Uh, Nevis Joe Neves, Joe Ed, Hey, what can you help to be successful since the beginning? So you don't waste time and money starting your store. The thing is, is you're going to spend time and money starting your store. That's guaranteed. Like you're not going to, you're not going to instantly get success with this. Um, I mean, the, you, I mean, watch a lot of YouTube videos, but taking action is going to help you a lot. I mean, it, it's kind of a hard question to answer just because you're going to spend time and money starting your store. There's no way to really get around it. Maybe getting a course could help you uh, shortcut the amount of time that you have to spend on through videos and stuff like that. A course could help with that. Um, but I mean, in terms of, hey, I mean, there's not really a shortcut for going through it. It's going to take a lot of trial and error. But I would say the biggest thing is taking action because if you don't take any action on any of the information, you're not going to get anywhere. And it's going to cost money when you're taking action with a lot of things. Unless you're trying to go like the free traffic, build a base content method, which is really good, but it takes a lot longer, so. Uh, Joseph, yeah, I already answered that one. Joe J, Joe J J, do you recommend IG influencers starting out, and do you make video ads or picture ads just as good? Um, so Joe J J, do you? I mean, to answer that question, I would definitely recommend Instagram influencers starting out because it's a little bit easier. But it is kind of a pain to like be contacting them and dealing with all that kind of stuff. So if you want to test around with just Facebook ads, with conversion ads, that can work uh, as well. Do you make and do you make video ads or picture ads? I mean, with Instagram influencers, video is going to be really good. Pictures can work too. I mean, for, I mean, from what I've seen, pictures have definitely gotten some sales. Both, both work. It depends on the product. If you're, it, the thing is, if it's like a piece of jewelry, a video ad isn't really going to do that much for it. It's mostly just the picture, right? Same with like a swimsuit. It, it, it's really the, it's kind of like, how are you conveying what the product does? So if, if a video conveys better what the product does, like a flashlight, if it's like a really bright flashlight, bright flashlight, then yeah, Joe, uh, definitely make a video around it or find a video on it. That's going to be better. But if it's just because just a picture of a flashlight isn't going to exactly explain what it does, but just a picture of some jewelry would explain that plenty. Like you don't really need a video of someone panning around on jewelry. I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to do, but both, both would work. It just, it more so depends on the product of what you need it to be. 
Uh, Joseph, I'm just curious, are you balling on Shopify? Uh, I mean, I would say balling is Shopify. I mean, sure. I mean, I don't exactly know the context of that question, but for sure, for sure. Shopify is, is, is pretty killer. I would say it's, I mean, really e-commerce in general is pretty sweet. Uh, it's, I mean, in terms of in comparison to physical businesses, like physical businesses take way more energy to get started because of the upfront cost, all that kind of stuff. Um, because like, yeah. Uh, okay, going along here, uh, answering Melanie's question. Sorry, I just like blanked out for a second there. Uh, Melanie McDonald, how long does it normally take to start seeing sales uh, when you first started out? When you first started out? So, I mean, it took me, I got lucky with a Facebook ad like a while ago where I had someone order like two teeth whiteners right off the bat. I talked about that in the video I did with Zach. Um, and it was kind of funny how I got lucky with that first sale, but I mean, it, it, it could take a couple months for sure. It could take even more than a couple months. For some people, it takes them seven months. I mean, if you're doing the right things, learning the right everything, like it, it could work a lot quicker. You know, if you notice something isn't working, move to something else. Like, don't just sit in the same rut, uh, Melanie. That, that'd probably be the best for you. Uh, advice wise, uh, Sandeep, I loved the Google ad traffic, which you told in your last about in your last video and thanks being so transparent, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Socialismus, I'm making 33 uh, euros profit on a 38 euro product with AdWords. Sweet. Yep, for sure. $33 profit. Exactly. It goes to show you the amount of money you can make with, um, or 33 euros. I, I think that's a euro symbol, not a dollar sign, obviously. But I mean, it just goes to show you certain products definitely can bring in profit. Um, how can customers buy me with Visa and MasterCard in my Shopify store? Uh, Zakir, Sufain, how can customers buy me with Visa and MasterCard? Uh, okay, so to get to get that, you need Shopify payments. So Shopify payments or any other payment provider. If if Shopify payments doesn't work in your country, which um, it I mean it, it it works in a lot of different countries. Although I would check the list on Shopify's website. They tell you what countries Shopify payments works for, or if you have to switch to another payment provider. But that's how you accept the Visa and Mastercard payments on your Shopify store. Shopify payments is the best one because it's the easiest to set up. You literally just click it and it goes, but others you have to maybe mess around with a little bit more, but it just depends on your country. If you luck out that you can use it, I would use Shopify payments, but that's, you have to go to your payment settings and, and payment gateways and add that. I actually have a video on my channel going over payment gateways. It's like one of my more popular ones. Cause I, I think a lot of people have that issue, uh, mostly for people in other countries. Um, so you can check out that video on my channel. It's like, just, you know, just search through there. It's on the most popular list. Uh, moving along, Ian Morocco. Sorry for asking so many dumb questions. Should I do ad carts for testing or something else? Um, hey, no question is dumb. Uh, everything is valid. Um, should I do ad carts? Uh, you could test with ad carts. A lot of people give different advice from what I've seen. I mean, you could do ad carts for testing. I'm currently doing view content for testing. It just depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, I, that's that's a, that's kind of the answer for a lot of things. I mean, ironically, but I mean, both you, you're kind of taking them through the process of purchasing. So like view content, add a cart, then initiate checkout, all, all those things. You're kind of like optimizing the easiest thing to get is a view content. So you can start with that. And as your pixel seasons more, you can move up from there to add the cart to and then eventually purchase, but that's how you test. Uh, you got to get your pixel seasoned, you know, nice, you know, it's like a steak. You got to get, get it seasoned. I know how that's how everyone else talks about it on YouTube. I think it's kind of funny. Um, so Sandeep, I'm about to start buddy and collecting as much information, finding it hard to research on products, what to sell. And I'm confused why I'm not able to take action. 
Yeah, uh, it's definitely the hardest thing to do. Just recognize that you're going to lose money in the beginning uh, to learn. So recognize that. Recognize you're going to spend time and money. So if you don't have a lot of money, figure out, like, get a job or something. I mean, I don't know. Like, figure out a way to get money. If you if you already have a job, then that's great because you, you need some sort of income to really start kind of, like, testing stuff out. You can start it up with, like, not a lot of money. Um, but you're going to need money to spend on advertising and all that kind of stuff. If you're going the Facebook ads, Instagram influencer route, uh, it just depends, but hard to research on products. Just try and find other stores in your niche. That's what I've done. That's what other people have done. Find other stores in your niche. And then that's how you can find what to sell. You can see what's best selling on their stores and move from there. Um, that's how you kind of do product research. Because you want to you want to piggyback on products that are already working. You don't want to just, oh wow, this product looks cool. Oh, I like this product. Doesn't matter what you like. It's what matters what everyone else likes and what will sell. It doesn't matter how much you like one product on AliExpress. If it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. Don't get emotionally attached to products. It's another thing. Uh, you're welcome, Zakir. Thank you so much, bro. You're welcome. Yep, ambitious entrepreneur, general or ni or niche or niche or semi niche. Haha. -ha. Uh, so I would say to go more, it depends. Once again, general is good for a like trendy store, like trend products. Um, I've seen a lot of those on Facebook or you could go more niche. Now, if you want to build a more long-term business model, I would say, uh, then you want to go niche. Like Socialismus right here. Uh, he's been a long time subscriber. Okay. He does like health and beauty niche. You know, that's his general niche. I mean, you can kind of focus on somewhat semi, semi niches within that, uh, ambitious entrepreneur, but you want to pick a niche that you can focus your store around. If you're going that like long term type of route, um, that's the best thing to do probably, but answering Socialismus's question here. Uh, what do you think about my current strategy? I create click optimized AdWords ads. Cool. Build Facebook pixel data. Good. And then create lookalike audience from the AdWords searches. Yeah, that can work 100%. I've heard a lot of different people having good success with that for sure. Um, I have not personally tested that directly myself, but you know, that process sounds, sounds logical and reasonable that you should be able to have some success with that. Um, I would just make sure that the, the Facebook look like, I mean, if it's the Facebook lookalike audience, obviously keep what's working. Like if the AdWords ads are working perfectly fine, definitely keep those obviously. And you're going to build the pixel data from that, obviously. Uh, and you could create lookalike, lookalike audiences from those searches. Just, I don't know exactly how you would want to structure your, um, your ad copy, your pictures and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's a little bit different from how you do AdWords, AdWord targeting and all that. So obviously it's just a little bit different there in comparison. So it, it depends. Uh, moving along here, Aaron uh, Barrett's, have you done much print on demand and what are your thoughts on using that to start a brand? So Aaron, to answer your question, I would definitely say that print on demand is awesome. I have done a little bit of it, not really for a Shopify store. I've done it more so just for myself, like for some of my friends and stuff like that. So I have experience with print on demand. Like I know how it works pretty well, uh, but it's good to start a brand. Uh, I would say really only do it if you're starting a brand. I wouldn't really do print on demand unless you're starting a brand because print on demand, you have to find certain types of designs, certain logoing stuff that sells. And it, it's harder to find that you're, you're almost creating a completely unique product. And so it's a little bit more difficult to sell unique products that aren't under a brand that people are already attached to and have some sort of, uh, association with. Uh, Joseph, would you recommend any Ty Lopez courses? I have not personally taken any of his courses. However, I know a few people who have really one dude specifically who I like, he's told me a little bit about it, it more in depth. 
Um, he actually does like a lot of funnel type stuff. I haven't talked to him in a while. I probably should, but um, his courses are kind of like supplemental. Now, I haven't taken one directly. This is all just from what my, one of my friends said, okay? Um, it's more so supplemental. What he found the best was the Facebook group that you get put into within Ty's course and you talk to people in there. That was kind of like the most valuable thing that he had told me from his courses. Um, so I guess, I mean, that, that's kind of like the best recommendation I can have for it. It's helpful. It's kind of, you know, it just depends on what you what you want to do, what you want to learn. I mean, I have a course on Shopify dropshipping more specifically within that. I know Ty has a lot of like social media marketing agency courses and stuff like that. And like, I mean, he kind of creates a course around anything that's popular. So Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to join the free Facebook mastermind group, kind of going along with Facebook groups and stuff like that, I have one linked in the description box below for crushing Shopify dropshipping. That's the name of it. So you guys can go ahead and get in there. Uh, that's every, everything is linked in the description, Facebook mastermind group, my Instagram, all that kind of stuff. If you guys want to contact me, follow me, anything like that, it's linked below. Um, let's go ahead and get in there. Lots of, lots of fun. Lots of fun in there. So moving along here with the questions, uh, Donovan, Brandon, uh, what if we find a winning product, but it's not converting right? I had over 200 views on a product and a bunch of abandoned carts in one day, but only one sale. I think it's something with my store. Yeah, I, I'll be doing a store review a stream in, a nec in the next couple days. I kind of alternate between doing just straight Q&A live streams and store review live streams just because just to switch it up a little bit between those two. So Donovan, definitely like subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Hit the notification bell so you get notified for when I go live. And I could review your store for you in the live stream. If you wanted to do it more privately, if you want me to like just kind of like look at it and see if there's something wrong with it, um, like that's kind of glaring, then just send me a DM on Instagram, link below. Um, and then you can, yeah, I can just take a quick look at it and see um, if you don't want it to be like, publicly viewed which i can understand some people don't want their stores like out there a lot of people don't care but it you know depends uh ian morocco do you suggest excluding countries if you go worldwide with audience um yeah i would exclude third world countries so not not anything against india but there's a lot of parts of india india has some really nice spots india also has some pretty bad spots so you probably want to um, exclude third world countries if you go worldwide with your audience. Um, it's, I think it's like lagging right now for me, but I think it's it should be going through. The stream is, still says that it's uh, live. All right, there it goes. All right, so yeah, that's kind of like what I would do for excluding countries uh, in Morocco. Uh, moving along, uh, Gugu Ganga Comedy TV. <laughs> How would it be possible to start a watch brand out of a Shopify store. So watches are really oversold. Some work. I've heard of some people selling like these mechanical type watches and those can sell really well. Selling watches generally is kind of like a really hard thing to do just because it's so oversaturated. Like that's the one niche that's super oversaturated. If you wanted to start a watch brand, yeah, you could definitely do it. I mean, movement watches is based on a Shopify store. They have a custom theme and all that kind of stuff, obviously, and they're like one of the biggest brands on Shopify, but you can start a watch brand on Shopify for sure, but doing a, a drop shipping watch brand, mm, kind of hard. Um, you would have to create like actual, like your own products to really get any kind of difference in the marketplace, try and sell something that works. I just say it's a lot harder. Uh, you'd have to really make a good brand. It's just difficult. It's such an oversaturated marketplace with watches. Um, you have to find like a certain pocket that's kind of untapped for that. Uh, the lab or the hype lab, Orban, Orban Quasi, Quasi, trying to say all these names. Uh, what statistics do you consider for a product being oversaturated and a product perfect for testing? So I would just say if you see a lot of other stores already selling it, that's the best way to know. And think about how they're marketing it. If you see like, most people are probably just going to target like one interest and just go from there. And they're probably going to get oversaturated. 
I, I mean, I don't know. It's easier for me because I see what all of everybody's stores kind of look like generally, so I can see if something's a little bit oversaturated, what's being underserved in the marketplace. I just do look at other stores. Like, follow some influencers that, that do dropshipping, like, shout-outs. I mean, that's maybe one way to kind of see. Uh, how do you identify a winning ad set product if you're getting sales? I mean, if you're getting a lot of sales, that's for sure the way that you identify if it's winning. Not getting any sales, then probably not worth that winning. Uh, please, can you do step-by-step -step series for people like us who are broke? <laughs> Sand deep. Step-by-step <laughs> -step series. I mean, I don't exactly know what you mean by step-by-step -step series. Do you mean like starting a store? Or it, it just... Like, what do you want step-by-step? -step? Because I can do a specific video on what you're asking for to be step-by-step. -step. I can't do, like, an entire series on everything because that's what the course is, pretty much. Um, and that would take, like, ages. Um, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that that's probably the best. Just, if, if there's anything specific. Like, I did a full Facebook ad video kind of going over targeting um that's on my channel it's one of my more popular videos so if that's a step-by-step -step one i mean i can do individual step-by-step -step, not like everything you know that's like too much <laughs> uh ambitious entrepreneur how would you go about finding influencers all i could find are influencers with bots or engagement groups yeah that's that's the tough thing um i just say keep searching maybe try and see maybe some of the influencers that are followed by some of your, that your, some of your friends are following maybe because searching for them. Yeah. When you search for them, that's what everybody else is doing too. So those ones come up. If you do some more digging, maybe through some of your friends, influencers, all that kind of stuff, like more deeper, maybe the suggestions with the drop down arrow, that's how you can find some untapped ones. But obviously the ones that you search for right away, uh, are going to be generally over overplayed, overdone. Uh, moving along, stylist music, always come through, man. Thanks so much. Should be buying your course very soon. Awesome. Great to hear, for sure. I really appreciate that. I mean, the people that are already in there, really enjoying it, for sure. Um, lots and lots of value. Uh, so, guys, just leave your questions below. I hope that answers your question, uh, ambitious entrepreneur. Um, because that you have to dig deeper than just like the, because the first people that come up are going to be the oversaturated pages that are bots and engagement groups. Um, sand deep. I want individual step-by-step. -step. You know what I mean? Not the entire thing. Please do that. Um, individual step-by-step -step on like what? Because I, I've done it on Facebook ad. I've done it on on um, some other store type stuff. Just just name a topic for step by step. Um, individual step by step. Oh, individual. Do you mean like? I don't know exactly what you mean. Do you mean like one on one type of thing? You mean like a YouTube video? Because I can make an, a YouTube video step by step on like a specific topic for sure. Um. I just don't get what you mean exactly. Like, obviously, I know, I guess I know what you mean, not the entire thing. Uh, hey, what's up? What's up, uh, Marco? Uh, Nikolic, uh, do you use Facebook search for product research? Uh, I have a little bit. I haven't really had a ton of luck with that. I would say Instagram is a little bit better just because you can kind of find like a branded page and see what they're selling and then check what's, what's best selling on their store. Facebook search can work for it too, though. Um, you can do Instagram and Facebook search, uh, to answer your question, Marco. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, so just to answer Sandeep's question really quick before we go into Julia, um, YouTube video, right? Okay. Um, setting up store to actually making sales using IG. Okay. I get what you mean. So like, I think what you're asking then is how to make like the sales page, setting up a store. I, I think I, I think what you're asking for is a full series, maybe. Setting up store. 
Okay. Um, so anyway, really quick here with Julia. Um, oh, not a full series. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Sandeep. Um, I get, okay. So you want like set up store, um, using IG and Facebook, um, doing like, like structuring a shout out, setting up a store. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can set up a store. I mean, I have a lot of different videos on the YouTube channel for, like, all those different topics. Um, I, I mean, I kind of get what you mean, but it, um, uh, going along here with um, Julia. So, Julia Seg, hi, I am just joining. What's up? What's up? Uh, welcome back as well. I remember you were in the reviewing um, store section uh, last week last week or a few days ago, I was doing some like store reviews. So I am going to do a store since you're still in here, I'm going to do a store review real quick of Julia just because she was in here for the last, um, store review stream and she wasn't able to get her store reviewed. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, review her store real quick. Just, just doing one here just to go through Julia's because she, she was in the last stream where I did store reviews, but she wasn't able to get her store reviewed. I do specific streams for store reviews, like a couple times a week. I'm gonna be doing one the next time, so I kind of like alternate between these Q and A ones versus the store review ones. So just be on the watch out for when you know hit the notification bell for when I do the different ones. Get a lot of questions coming in, um, so I'm gonna move up through here. So I gotta type in Julia's store real quick, and I'm gonna answer the questions before we uh, jump into her store specifically. So it's Smiles Knob. SmilesKnobs.com. Um, okay, cool, cool. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna open that up in a second here, but first I'm gonna answer a couple of these questions before I jump into her store. I just want to get it loaded up. Um. Okay. Uh, hey, Brennan Milan Grobler, what's up? Um. So what would what would you mean is the minimum requirement investment to get really get started? Because a lot of people say you don't need any money, but I've experienced that to be false. Yeah, you need money to start this uh, because for one, Shopify costs twenty nine dollars a month. Uh, so that's one thing for sure. That's monthly twenty nine dollars. Uh, you also are going to need money for ads. You're also going to need money to order some products, like you know when you actually get orders. Because uh, you want to send out the products like right away. So to start testing with ads and all that, I mean, you probably want anywhere from $300 to $1,000 or even $1,400. I mean, that's that's a lot more. I would say the sweet spot is around like 500 bucks, maybe a little bit more than that, just to like have a good comfortable amount. And it's also money that you don't like need, okay? It should be extra income that you're setting aside to start this business with. Um, because if it's money that you need, you're, you're not going to like be willing to actually put it into ads and testing and stuff like that. But at the same time, you also want to start it out small and not blow a bunch of money doing the wrong things or just wasting it. So I would definitely say a few hundred dollars to, to under a thousand, around a thousand if, if, if best, I mean, but you really don't need a ton. That's, I mean, you can do it with under a thousand, around 500 to, I mean, you could even do it with less, but it's just, you're going to need some money to get started with this. That's, that's the thing with this business model, because you're doing ads, if you were doing SEO and like, uh, growing a social following around a niche, you don't need any money to start that. But the drop shipping and this type of business, you do need a little bit more money to get started. So moving along here, Sandeep, yep, just like zero to one K challenge. Oh, okay, I get what you mean. Well, that, that would definitely take some time to like develop, but I, I get what you mean. I could I could put that in the in the list for sure, uh, Sandeep. Uh, Kayumba Sumba, what do you think about Volusion versus Shopify? Uh, I like Shopify a lot more. I have a lot of more experience. I've never really played with Volusion, but I, I like Shopify more from what I've seen from people talking about it. Um, also Milan Grobler, if you haven't actually started your store at store yet, I have a Shopify 14 day free trial, uh, for any of you guys who haven't actually started your store yet, that is linked in the description box below to get yourself signed up with 14 day free trial. 
all that kind of stuff there. Um, so you definitely check that out. Free Facebook mastermind group. Follow me on Instagram. Course, all, all that stuff's linked in the description uh, to answer that question there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Julie's uh, Julia's, uh, store just because I know she's been waiting patiently. If you're still in here, let me know. I'm going to re start reviewing your store. I'm only doing one store review for this stream just because she was waiting the last time and wasn't able to get her store reviewed. Typically, I do store review streams separate. Okay, cool, Julie. Yeah, okay, Sozia, the target market is teens, or at Sozia. And it's teens 20-something. I hope it's not oversaturated. Um, okay, going along here. Um, socially, what do you target with your teeth whitening products is natural teeth whitening powder. Is the natural teeth whitening powder oversaturated? Oh, I'm here. Be honest. <laughs> be honest with the store. Okay. Well, I like the, I like the name smile, smile snobs. Okay. I read it as smiles knobs and I was like smiles knobs. What is smiles knobs? But I'm like, okay, it's smile snobs. So I like the name. That's cool. Smile, smile snobs. Cool. Um, I like this free global shipping on all orders for living to time. I like the colors. I like the pictures at the front. Definitely explains the brand well. So char because your smile matters. Perfect. So charcoal teeth whitening. So socialismus definitely he's in the same niche here as you. So that's why you know asking those questions for sure. You guys are in like the same type of like teeth whitening type of niche. Uh, so as you can see here. I would probably get rid of this right here just because no one really reads um, text at the top. What I would recommend you do with this, put this on your about page. Um, just don't put it on the home page. It's not really a necessary factor. So if we go to your about page. Yeah, so you can put that on your about page. That's fine for branding and trust. But I would I would remove it from the home page just because it's people don't really read that. People want to see products and pictures like this. Um, I like the colors. The branding is nice. Bamboo toothbrush. That's a good job that you did to, if there was any branding in the corners here, to get rid of those. Um, so that's good. It looks pretty clean. Sign up for a newsletter. Uh, in terms of newsletter, it's kind of hard to see the box here because of the backdrop color. So maybe you want to fix that. Not a lot of people actually enter their email in on the sign up for our newsletter thing here. So you might want to do like some sort of email pop up. But a, set a delay, though. Don't have it pop up instantaneously when people go to your website. Um, just because people will close it instantly. Um, so, uh, moving along here. So, activated charcoal powder. Cool. That's a product. I, did I sell that with my black face mask? I don't think I actually sold any of these when I was doing the black face mask beauty store. Um, introducing our best-selling activated charcoal powder. It's definitely a good product. I like your your product description. That's good. If you can find a video, a video can also help you. Um, you can do that as well on your product pages. Um, I like <laughs> this. Looks hilarious. That is so insanely gross. I feel like that's almost like too disgusting. Like I feel like no one has teeth that bad, but I guess maybe someone does. This is more realistic, I feel, like this top one here. Uh, that's funny. I, this is a good product for sure. Um, pricing is solid. Definitely good pricing strategies. You want to diversify your pricing, not make everything the same, so that's fine. Activated charcoal toothpaste. This is definitely a hot thing right now, so that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, yep, so you're going with the purple branding. That's fine to have that as your add to cart button, as I was showing before. Your contact us page. Yeah, I would say just fix your boxes because right now it's all white. So no, and this is kind of like a minor thing, but people can't really see where to type their stuff in if they need to contact you. So I would just make this like the, the backdrop color different so that it, so that there's a difference here, but so they can see where they, they got to click and type. Um, I think that's, that's most of everything for your store though. Let's go ahead and check out. Okay, your Instagram was not working. Um, I you have to actually put the URL in there for you can't just put at. So I see you have it as at smiles, uh, smile snobs. You you have to put it 
on Instagram as HTTP, uh, S slash like, or Instagram.com slash. And then your, your, you are, you have to copy the Instagram URL from Instagram's website and then it will link properly. Yeah. And the same thing with Facebook. So you have it set up kind of as like, it's yeah. So go into your, go into your settings and you have to fix that. Um, that should fix that problem there. Um, let me see if it works now with the Facebook. Yeah, see, it's kind of like doing this or it's not working. So just go ahead and try and fix that. It's good. You have a shipping section here. Perfect. Yep. Two to that will cover you as well. If anyone asks you about that. So that's solid shipping times. Yep. Two to three weeks destination. You that's funny. That's good. Yeah, I would say your store's pretty solid. Just fix the, 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 the problems with the outlines of the colors. Uh, get rid of the text here and, and, and just put this on your about page or at the bottom here um, instead of the newsletter. Make sure the backdrop, you could leave this newsletter here, but I would also recommend doing the, like what I said earlier with the email pop-up, but set the time so it doesn't pop up instantly because that's like spammy and people don't like that. Make it like after a little bit, after they scroll through the page, which you can do on Privy. Privy is the pop-up I recommend. It's what everybody else uses. Uh, Facebook and Instagram fix that. But that, that's pretty much it with your store. So we're gonna go back to the full regular Q&A now. Um, I do actual like store review streams. Um, I kind of alternate between these like store review streams and Q&A streams. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to full camera mode. But I hope that helped, uh, Julia, those couple of things on your store that were kind of like not working. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, okay, so going back to the questions here, um, going back up, I know we were back, uh, I think around, uh, okay, Fuse Mods, do you, do you do products, descriptions, text, or bullet points? I would do a mix of like some text and then bullet points. Those work well. Um, it, it just depends on what you want to do, but both work. I would do some text and some bullet points, like a mix. Kind of like what... um what Julia was doing on hers. Uh, thanks buddy. Eagerly waiting for that. Yeah. You're welcome. Sandeep, uh, Ladango. Hi I, there. I was in the last live store review vid. I changed my niche and went for the Marvel black Panther superheroes. Is it okay? So the problem with superheroes and Marvel and black Panther kind of stuff is that you could get potentially cease and desist because of copyright issues. So I would probably not go into that because unless you obtain the proper licensing for selling those products, which is probably expensive, like ThinkGeek is able to do it, um, I would stay away from that. Do things that are non-copyrighted, like the, the teeth whitening stuff or or hunting or dogs. or I mean, literally, there's so many. There's so many little niches you could do that aren't branded and copyrighted. Um uh, Milan, appreciate it. Uh, Milan Grobler, appreciate it. I have experienced that to get big amounts of traffic. You need a minimum ad set spending limit of 10 to $15 a day. I've only gotten one sale from over a thousand visits. I did tweet a lot of things in between and have been testing things or tweak early morning for getting how to spell. <laughs> yeah, for me, it is currently 8 20 PM. So it's a little bit, um, a little bit later or later in the evening for me, but I guess it might be 12 hours difference. Maybe it's the morning for you at 8 a.m. Um, but yeah, going along here, I want to know about how that copyright stuff, it affects and all at Sandeep. Yeah, copyright, yeah. Uh, you want to avoid, like I just said about the Marvel stuff, uh, you want to avoid that, Sandeep. Really, that's really how copyright affects. You just, you might get that prob you might have that problem more long term with your business. You're not gonna have that in the beginning because no one's gonna find your little tiny store. But as you grow it and get bigger, you will have that issue and you do not want to run into that issue. Um so just avoid things that are branded items. Because there's a lot of fake branded items on AliExpress. Easily for sure. Uh Milan Grobler, would you recommend an FA an FAQ page? Yeah, for sure. FAQ page is good. You can put that in the corner on the bottom or just, I mean, you can put it at the top. FAQ page is good. I would, it, the most FAQ, the, the biggest FAQ would be um, uh, shipping times. So you can answer that question there. Uh, Fuse mods, you're welcome. Thanks, bro. So 
I'm going to be wrapping up the live stream here, hitting about the one hour mark. Um, so any last questions you guys have, definitely check out the links below. If you want to join the free Facebook mastermind group, I got to hit the gym. Uh, so thanks for transparency. You join the Facebook group. You're welcome. Uh, Sandeep, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, also linked there, Facebook group, everything. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Any last questions, I'll answer that before I have to go. Um, got to get changed, go to the gym and all that kind of stuff. You know, got to take care of your health. These wimpy little biceps won't grow themselves. Um, so, yep. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yep, you're welcome, guys. So, yeah, like I said, everything's linked below. Like this live stream as well if you got any value. Like this live stream. Hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell as well so you get notified for future videos, uploads, and all these live streams. So, yeah. And then no other questions are really coming in. So, yeah, guys, just hope you enjoyed. Check out the links below. Uh, but I will see you guys in the next one. So, peace out. Thanks for tuning in.